The Commanders currently sit at 4-7, and seven, which means that their playoff hopes are definitely dwindling at this point in the 2023 NFL season. So I think it's time to roll out the red carpet here. Draft season is officially here on the Commanders Report. And for our first draft video of this season, we're going to be going over the top first round draft targets for the Washington Commanders, according to the Mel Kuyper Jr.'s latest big board for the 2024 NFL Draft. So if you want more draft co content here over these next about half year before the big day uh, there in the spring, go ahead and click that subscribe button right now. We're going to be getting into the details on all the top prospects, all the players that the Washington Commanders should be going after. They got two second round picks. They're going to probably have an early first round pick. It's going to be a very, very crucial offseason and draft for the Washington Commanders. So if you want the best uh, and most in-depth analysis here on YouTube for the Commanders needs during the draft, make sure you click that subscribe button right now. Now, before we can talk about trade targets, we have to talk about team needs for the Washington Commanders heading into this 2024 offseason. Lots of free agents for the Commanders, which is opening up a lot of cap space for them. And then they also have a lot of really, really high draft picks this year. To Like I said, a high first rounder, probably a high second rounder, and then another second rounder, uh, not to mention your third round pick this year as well. So it's definitely going to be interesting here. And I definitely think that there's some definite needs for the Commanders moving forward. And because you trade Chase Young and Montez Sweat, you got to address edge rusher early on in this draft. I think that you should definitely be looking to get a top edge rusher potentially on day one here. We're going to be talking about a couple of edge rushers on today's show. And then the other big thing is also in the trenches here. Anywhere on the offensive line really works for me. Offensive tackle Charles Leno Jr. I'd love to replace him this offseason. In fact, I'm, I'm demanding that the Washington Commanders replace Charles Leno Jr. this offseason. He is not worth uh, being the starting left tackle of this team anymore. And then also, I want a new offensive guard. Sadiq Charles, Chris Paul, we need a new left guard here. I'm okay with keeping Sam Cosme, but also when it comes to the offensive tackle and offensive guard, I also want a new offensive center. I know you drafted Ricky Stromberg on day two last year, but I mean, if this guy was really any good and he was really... Uh, going to be the starter for this team at center moving forward, I think we'd already be seeing him in the starting lineup. Instead, we're seeing Tyler Larson instead, so I really think the commanders probably need to address center as well next offseason. Another thing that they should address is tight end because Logan Thomas, man, Curtis Hodges, man, you know, all Cole Turner, you know, there's just these a bunch of tight ends in this room right now that just aren't dynamic. They're not true receiving threats, and I really think Sam Howell, with with how much he targets the middle of the field, could really use a nice high-end receiving tight end moving forward. And then another thing that they could definitely get next offseason is linebacker Cody Barton, David Mayo, and Khalid Hudson are all hitting the free agency market. I really doubt they bring any of those guys back unless it's on a very team-friendly deal. And I think they're going to want to pair Jamin Davis with another uh, high-end linebacker starter here going into the 2024 campaign. And there's also some potential needs depending on what the commanders decide to do in free agency and bring some guys back. If you don't bring back Kendall Fuller, you might need cornerback. If you don't bring back Cam Curl, you might need a strong safety. If you don't bring back Antonio Gibson, you might need a running back. And then Joey Sly as well uh, is a free agent. You could need a kicker. So these are the guys that could be coming back, but maybe not Joey Sly after missing some really key field goals this year. I'd say he's less likely. Kendall Fuller is still playing at a really high level. Same thing with Cameron Curl. I'd say if the Commanders are going to re-sign some players, it's probably going to be Curl and Fuller. So by draft night, I really don't expect corner or safety to be high on the Commanders list of needs. Antonio Gibson will be an interesting one to watch out for though. Don't think he'll be that expensive. Uh, and it'll definitely be interesting to see if the new coaching reg regime that's definitely coming uh, views him as a valuable uh, piece moving forward. Now, my take on this whole situation is that when you head into the first round of a draft and you, and you have certain holes on your roster, you look for those holes in the high, uh, in the high value areas 
uh, in terms of position, right? Offensive tackle, quarterback, number one wide receiver, number one corner, uh, you know, maybe a high-end pass rusher on the interior. You look at the high-value positions and you try to land one of those in the first round. And for the commanders, where that's needed is at edge rusher and out along the offensive line. So I expect a trench player to certainly be on the commander's radar. So let me know down there in the comments section, what is the biggest positional need for the commanders to target early on in the 2024 NFL draft? This is going to be the pinned comment on today's show. So YouTube's going to throw you an ad break here in just a couple of seconds. When that happens, let me know what the biggest team need for the commanders is down there in the comment section. All right, so now let's get into Mel Kuyper Jr.'s top targets for the Washington Commanders in round one. He recently re recently released his latest big board of the top 25 prospects. And there's 10 players here along the trenches that I think could really help the Commanders if they were to take them in the first round of the 2024 NFL Draft. Let's start with the lowest ranked player here, offensive guard Zach Zinter for the Michigan Wolverines here. He's currently ranked number 25, a true offensive guard. He's plug and play, but it is a lower value position. Plus, I really don't think uh, the commanders are going to be drafting this late into the first round. So Zinter, definitely an interesting prospect here. If he falls to the second round early on with that Chicago Bears draft pick in the early second round, I could see him potentially getting drafted there if he falls out of the first. But in terms of a first round draft target, I'm not sure Zinter is going to be is going to be a legitimate option for the commanders, especially given some of the other needs that they have. Now, coming up here, I got more commanders draft targets from Mel Kuyper Jr.'s big board, or most, most recent big board, that is. But first, I want to tell you about our sponsor today, which is Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use our code CLNS for a deposit match up to $100. Dollars today. If you're looking for a way to spice up your game days this NFL season, Prize Picks is perfect for you because it's a skill based, real money daily fantasy sports game. And if you're wondering how daily fantasy sports work, here's how you pick two to six players if they'll go for more or less than their prize picks projection. You can even win up to 25 times your money on any entry. So let's take a look at my entry for, th for Thursday's Thanksgiving Day matchup between the Commanders and Cowgirls here. I'm going to go with the more on Sam Howell passing yards. I'm going to take the less on Dak Prescott, F Dak. And then we're going to go with the more on Terry McLaurin. Scary Terry, I think it's more than 57.5 receiving yards in this one. You can check it out now and get your picks in before Turkey Day right now with prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use our code CLNS for a deposit match up to $100 today. With prize picks, it takes less than 60 seconds to make your picks. So get them in right now before Thanksgiving dinner. Go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use our code CLNS. For a first deposit match up to $100 today. Sticking on the offensive line here, offensive tackle Jordan Morgan, number 24 from the Arizona Wildcats here. And Morgan is somebody that had a major knee injury back in 2022, didn't really play all that much in that season, but he came back and he's really come back with a vengeance uh, here in 2023. He's really, really complete as a pass protector. Really like what I'm seeing from Jordan Morgan on film right now. And he's definitely, he might be somebody that's moving up draft boards throughout this process because once people look at this guy's film, they're going to be impressed. Now we're going to go to offensive tackle again, JC Latham, number 19 here. And Latham is a hulking presence of a man, but He's very inconsistent. I think that probably by the end of this process, Morgan might even be ranked higher than Latham. Latham is a power blocker. He can pancake people like a mother effer, but he's a little bit inconsistent, can be a bit grabby, so it'll be interesting to see where he lands. Definitely a target for the commanders. Then you got Tyler Guyton here, number 17 for the Oklahoma Sooners. Really like his tape as well. Very clean pass rusher uh, coming out of Oklahoma. Kind of compares to Anton Harrison, in my opinion. Maybe not the biggest guy in the world, but I do like what I'm seeing on film with him. Currently, Mel Kuyper has him ranked number 17. And then maybe the best, I mean, I don't know if it's the best, but he's definitely one of the best offensive linemen in this draft class overall. Troy Fotano from the Washington Huskies. I mean, we know Michael Penix, man. He's, he's had clean pockets to work with all season long. He's obviously got great receivers as well. But Fotano, uh, currently playing guard for the Huskies, can play outside, he can play inside. Uh, he kind of reminds me a lot of Elijah Vera Tucker, 
who was drafted out of USC to the New York Jets a couple of seasons back. Definitely a really good player. Now, I'm going to be getting into the top five here in just a second, but I want to let you guys know that the Commanders currently hold the seventh overall pick in the 2024 NFL Draft as things stand right now. So let me know, where do you think the Commanders are actually going to end up drafting in the 2024 NFL Draft? Will it be inside the top 10? Could they even slide inside the top five? Let me know what you guys think down there in the comments section. Where will the Commanders be drafting next spring? Now we're on to the top five here, and it's another member of the Crimson Tide here. This time we're going to the defensive side of the ball with edge rusher Dallas Turner. Now Turner is nowhere close to where Will Anderson Jr. was last season, but he's very complete. He's a really good run block, uh, run defender. He's also got a nice arsenal of moves at his disposal as a pass rusher. Maybe not super high upside here uh, when if you're the Washington Commanders, but you, Dallas Turner is about as safe as you're going to get at the edge rusher position in the this draft class. Next up on the list here, the number 12 overall prospect on Kuiper's big board, Joe Alt from the from the University of Notre Dame with the Fighting Irish there. Very complete uh, offensive tackle. Very big uh, guy, 6'8", for an offensive tackle. Very big dude. Also, his dad uh, was a first-round pick for the Kansas City Chiefs all the way back in the day. Uh, he's somebody that's definitely going to be on the commander's radar, no matter where they're picking here in the first round. Then we go back to the defensive line here for probably the highest uh, probably the highest graded edge rusher in this draft class, bar none, and that's going to be UCLA's uh, Leatu Latu. I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, and it's he's the number 11 overall prospect. This is a very talented draft class coming up here in 2024, but when it comes to edge rushers, Latu is the absolute best. I think that he's going to be a potential star in this league moving forward. He's got all the physical tools you look for along with the polish. If he came out last year, he would have been one of the top, if not the top edge rusher taken. I mean, I don't know if like, guys like Nolan Smith and Will Anderson Jr., if he would have been taken above those guys, but he led the league in pressure rate in 20, or led the country in pressure rate in 2022, and he's putting together another really nice season here in 2023. Now, the number two prospect here on Mel's big board that could be going to the commanders is Alou Fashanu, uh, the best overall offensive tackle prospect in this draft, bar none. Joel Alt is really nice as well, but I really like Fashanu because he's the most complete guy, and he's only had 18 starts to this point for the Nittany Lions, which means he's still developing. Uh, and, you know, if, if, his, if you have a guy that's tape is this good and it's this polished and this, and this uh, clean, and he still has room to grow, and he definitely does after just 18 starts there at Penn State, I mean, you're looking at one of the best offensive tackle prospects we have seen in probably the last decade, maybe even the last two decades. So this guy is absolutely probably my number one target for the Washington Commanders right now. I think that if you get this guy to anchor or anchor your left uh, left tackle spot here for the next decade plus, I mean, Sam Howell is going to have a very clean uh, uh, blind side here uh, for a very, very long time, which would be very good because we know that that's not the case here in 2023. And then the number one overall draft target for Mel Kuyper for the Washington Commanders is not an offensive tackle. It's not an edge rusher. It is a tight end, and it's Brock Bowers, the tight end out of Georgia, one of the highest ranked tight end prospects in the history of the NFL draft. Now, I know that there's going to be people watching this video that are going to be a little bit uh, wary of drafting a tight end, especially in the top 10 or even the top five at this point in the NFL draft because Kyle Pitts was heralded as this unstoppable, unbustable uh, kind of prospect that was going to be amazing no matter what. And we've seen the production from Kyle Pitts. It just hasn't been there since he was drafted to the Atlanta Falcons uh, all those years back. So Brock Bowers, I think, is a little bit different, man. I think he's a generational talent. He's got the size. He's got the speed. I mean, the freaking Bulldogs run jet sweeps with this guy, man. This guy can run like a deer. He's big. He's an excellent blocker. He's a really good uh, wide receiver as well. And if anybody, if there's ever a tight end that has ever come out to the draft ready to play day one, it is Brock Bowers. And if you give Sam Howell a guy like Bowers in the middle of the offensive structure, it's going to be really, really tough to stop uh, Sam Howell 
targeting the middle of the field. That's all I'm going to say on that, man. So I personally, I think I would rather have Fashanu if I had the choice between the two. But let me know what you guys think down there in the comments section. Who should be the top guy on the Washington Commanders draft target list at this point in the process? Should it be Fashano type OF, not only fans, all right, unless you're into that kind of thing, but uh, we, and then you can go BB for Brock Bowers down there in the comments section. That'll be it for today's show, guys. Really do appreciate you guys sticking around with me to the very end. Make sure you click that subscribe button for more Commanders draft coverage throughout this season and offseason.